Today, we're going to talk about rules and regulations in the United States that concern the unmanned aerial systems. The objectives for today's lecture is for you to understand the role of the Federal Aviation Administration in ensuring uh, safety in the system. Also, to recognize the types the, of the UAS operations and distinguish between them, we're going to learn about three main types of the UAS operation. Um, then we're going to talk about the requirements for the legal operations uh, for commercial purposes in the United States, both in regards to a pilot and a system, the UAS itself. Also, the safety guidelines for recreational use of, uh, of UAS. Uh, then we're going to go into details about the operating rules for commercial use of UAS. It is known as Part 107. We're going to mention also the certification that will not go so much into details. You will also learn how to recognize the permanent and temporary no drone zones. You will know where not to fly or more when to know the find, when to find the information where not to fly. Uh, the next thing is, uh, th you're going to understand the role of the certificate of authorization and uh, how it changes the rules for uh, for operating the UAS, and also we're going to talk about the process, how to obtain one, and if you're even eligible to obtain one. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to talk about the educational use of UAS, which is uh, our concern as an educational institution, uh, and we're going to talk how to recognize when it's classified as recreational and as commercial. First, the Federal Aviation Administration. This is something we mentioned last week during the topic, but here I would like to go more into depth because this is uh, the main body that regulates and writes all the rules and regulations that we're going to talk about today. It was created in 58 because of the series of accidents. So uh, the real realization that the airspace needs to be controlled and there needs to be a body that will make um, cohesive rules and be in charge of it. Uh, so it was mandated to develop all the plans, all the policies for the airspace and for uh, ensuring safety of aircraft and efficient use of airspace. As you can imagine, there is a lot that goes into that. So since the creation, American air airspace has become one of the most regular regulated fields in the United States. The if FAA is concerned about national airspace system, so everything that's in the air above the United States. It's uh, already congested with a lot of pilot, piloted aircraft, and uh, there was a huge problem because a couple years ago there was a swarm of UAVs uh, that were coming into the system. Uh, to the national airspace system and the regulations required flood for planning. So first, there were just no regulations about the UAS because they did not exist. So the main mandate uh, of the FAA was to ensure that UAS will not endanger current uses of this uh, of the national air airspace system, especially the um, um, the men, the lives of men and men aircraft, uh, and the property on the ground. The problem with the F uh, that FAA faced was all their men aircraft had to detect and uh, detect sense and avoid capability, so they can monitor the man aircraft. This is not possible with the UAS that do not have uh, the tracking uh, system. So the FAA doesn't know where and how many UAS are currently in the air and needs to develop rules and regulations that will take this into account. Now we're going to talk about the type of UAS operations. FAA, FAA um, recognize that there are different 
users of UIS that use them for different purposes and created three separate uh, set of rules that will uh, that will be of concern of recreational users, commercial users, and then public entities. Uh, each of these groups have different rules and depending on the UAS operations. There is also additional one that is lacking here, the educational use, and this can be considered recreational or commercial, and we're going to cover it at the end. Now the, the least control uh, use of UAS, it's the recreational use. This is defined as the use of drones uh, for personal interest and enjoyment. So, for example, if you use the UAS to take photographs for your personal use, it would be considered recreational. But if you use exactly the same device to take exactly the same photographs or video, but you will be compensated for that or you will be selling it to another individual, this would be considered a commercial operation. This is a really important distinction this, uh, um, because the, the purpose of the operation, not the character of the operation itself, distinguishes what rules apply to the, to the drone and the pilot in command. Recreational use of UAS have some safety guidelines. It is mostly uh, based on the, uh, the um, rules, community-based safety guidelines uh, developed by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Uh, this is the um, body that was created for the modelers. So the models of the airplanes that were uh, in use for years and years right now can be applied to the UAS. So the safety guidelines is to fly not uh, no higher than 400 feet and remain below surrounding obstacles when possible. Also to keep the uh, UAS in eyesight at all times uh, and use an observer if needed. These are the rules that are similar to the rules for the commercial use that we're going to uh, talk about later. That really important uh, issue is to always see the vehicle when you are on the ground. Also, the important thing is always to know that the man manned aircraft has a higher priority and the UAS cannot interfere in, uh, with, is in, the, um, uh, in the airspace to not be an obstacle for aircraft. The, the next safety guidelines is to always um, respect uh, the privacy and the safety of the people and the property. So to fly at least 25 feet away uh, from individuals and property. Also, they need to contact the airport uh, and control tower if you are within the five miles of an airport. And you're going to learn later how to know if you are in the uh, in the vicinity of the airport, uh, how to check it, and how to be sure if you have to um, co contact the airport or you're far away, uh, you're far enough not to do that. There is one more pretty obvious uh, safety guideline for the recreational use. You need to ensure that you, as an operator, uh, are competent and proficient so to not endanger the people, property, or yourself. There is the rule that is usually regulated by the um, no drone zones. So uh, this includes the sensitive infrastructure or property as power stations, water treatment facilities, correctional facilities, heavily traveled roadways, government facilities. Some of them are included in the temporary restriction zones or in a permanent 
uh, no drone zones, but also the recreational users need to um, need to be have in mind that, for example, power lines are not clearly visible. Even if your drone is visible, the power line um, accidents are pretty common uh, with the use of the uh, UAS. Uh, also, if the uh, adverse weather is um, is a concern. Uh, the conditions of visibility or high uh, winds w uh, winds are the factors that should uh, uh, convince you uh, not to fly the UAS for fun, because it can be not so much fun. Even the recreational users need to be aware that some of the private uh, owners, private property, have special rules for operating drones. Uh, above their property. It, this is an example for uh, NC State uh, that has its own rules uh, for people to, that want to fly uh, in the airspace above them. Um, but it's also a good custom to always ask the owner of the property or just uh, to notify them that you're going to be flying uh, over their house or their fields. Even if the airspace above their property doesn't belong to them, it is always to, uh, better to have friends uh, in the owner than um, to expect problems. But it is illegal to conduct surveillance or, or photograph uh, persons in the area when the um, expectation of the privacy exists without the permission. And you can find more um, more about that in the privacy policy that uh, the MAA published. Uh, this is also pretty obvious. You do not want to harass people. You do not want to uh, use the uh, the camera or the UAS in the places where uh, you would not go and see with your own eyes uh, what is expected to be private. Uh, and um, it also <laughs> Uh, applies to the uh, pilot that should be proficient in uh, the operations. If you are fly under the influence of alcohol of, or drugs, um, this proficiency can be just disturbed and you uh, it is forbidden to uh, use any mechanical vehicle under the influence of the substances.